Yo, what's up, guys? It's Gabs here, and welcome to my Dead Egos vs. the World 2 recap. Dead Egos had their second show on September 24th, my birthday, actually, and uh, it was actually a really good show. First off, I want to give a massive shout out to Griff and Devon for throwing such an insane event. Honestly, I, I, by the end of it, it had one of the most hyped crowds I've seen at an underground show to date. And it's just amazing to see the homies win. Especially when you put into perspective the fact that I went to uh, Devon's show last year that he put on with just the homies. Uh, he rented out a renovated church and it was like maybe 50, 60 people that came. To now he's selling hundreds of tickets and getting some of the biggest underground artists out of the US to come to Canada. It's fucking awesome to see. And uh, it's, it's actually inspiring as fuck. So that being said though, Let's get into the performances at Dead Eagles vs. The World 2. Uh, we started with uh, Keon or Keon B. I'm gonna be honest, I have very limited knowledge when it comes to Keon. I kind of got the vibe that it was maybe one of his first times performing. Uh, I do recognize his face though, so I may have seen him perform. He may have performed at the first Steady Go show. I don't know. I've seen his face before. The stage presence just wasn't there, in my opinion. Uh, he kind of just roamed the stage a little bit. Uh, I think his style of music didn't also qu didn't quite fit the opening role as like 90% of his performance like the crowd was just kind of standing there but what I will say is the music isn't bad and uh, he actually kind of has like a decent voice from what I heard so I'm interested to see the progression from him uh, if possible next we had ghost <laughs> In my opinion, this is a much better performance than Keon's was. I still got the new performer vibe, but you got to keep in mind, most of these guys are still new to performing. They're relatively new artists. But Ghost got the crowd jumping a little bit. And uh, although there wasn't many people in the middle, mostly because of the, the way the venue was set up, uh, people were just sitting down on the sides and shit. He actually got the crowd into it a little bit. It's just, you know, he had the cons of having... Being an early act at a venue that wasn't necessarily built for the underground. The third act we saw was Damn Drone. This is called Sweet Toby, girl. You're just chilling, bro. You're in the wrong spot. We got a cartoon. This dude definitely had the energy running back and forth on the stage, even got, getting the crowd a little bit into it and whatever. Unfortunately for him though, the stage setup was not very wide. And at certain points, I just kept thinking he was doing the beep test because he kept running back and forth, but it was only like five feet that he was running back and forth on. But the crowd was relatively receptive to the performance though. 
and the music was actually pretty good. So all around, pretty good performance. We then had Axel Muko. I believe I'm saying that right. As far as I know, he is one of Griff's friends from British Columbia, which is fucking wild in itself. But not only that, but this dude is talented as fuck as a performer. Uh, definitely probably the surprise performer of the night, in my opinion. He brought the energy, the music was sick, the crowd was definitely receptive and involved, matched his energy. Great performance all around. Definitely want to look, want to see him again. Then, it's time for the artist I kind of know. Uh, we had the hardest duo in the underground, 10K Moss and Wavy Jackson up. These guys are so fucking hard. Uh, if, if you haven't already, go check out my latest video uh, on them on any of the short form content platforms. This was my first time seeing them live uh, and it made me a believer in the hype, like straight up. Like I already knew the music was fucking fire. The music was gas. And then you just add this element, like the crowd was jumping. They had the energy. I mean, they had fucking... 20 people on stage but you know that, that just shows how much they've built the connections in this city uh it, it's crazy uh if you're not popping out to first class facts next week to see these guys i don't know what the fuck you're doing with your life straight up so far definitely one of my favorite moments from the night following that we had my guy apostoli <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I kind of think Stoli was put in a tough position here. Uh, following Moss and Wavy is tough, especially because they're so energetic and had the crowd so so in the palm of their hand. Plus, I think Stoli's music isn't necessarily to the got the same energy that they their music does. The crowd definitely had to adjust to the energy of the performance. Stoli still did it very well. Uh, he's a natural performer. I think just the point he's at right now is the music is so good uh, and the performances are really good too. It's just the numbers and recognition just aren't there, which doesn't help when you're performing at an underground show and trying to get the, like the crowd involved. But I hope that someone in that audience, at least someone, went home and was like, okay, that kid Apostoli, that, those, that music was so good. So I hope someone went home and was like, yeah, let's get that 
in the, in the playlist because that's really the goal of these underground showcases as much as it is uh to showcase uh, or to you know party and like you know have a good time it's also a way for these artists to get their name out there and showcase their music uh and i think stoli did that very well we then had kuiper yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny story about him, uh, I found out about him through my boy, John Duncan. Now, if you don't know who that is, uh, you may know him as Jugs from way back in the day when we did a podcast together. I guarantee you probably haven't, but we used to do a podcast together probably two years ago. Turns out they're boys, uh, and like it's just one of the countless times that like the music industry just proves to be like such a fucking small ass world that like my real life friends like like i i almost feel like I, I live almost two lives but like my real life or like past like friends that i didn't know from the music industry have friends in the music industry and it's just it's it's very strange the way it works out as for the performance though it was pretty good i saw one track because I had to go to the bathroom, so I was a little bit, I was drinking, because it was my fucking birthday, I was working on my birthday, and so I had to go to the bathroom, but uh, I did see Kipper perform live, or Kuiper perform live, at the first Diddy Go show too, so he, he's a very good performer, uh, and uh, I, I definitely want to see him again. We've then pro probably got the act I've seen the most this year, uh, and that is Josh. <laughs> I mean, there's really not much to say. Dude has sick music and is sick live. Uh, he's got that Jersey Club vibe that always gets the crowd going. Everyone's always into it. Uh, and uh, I, I'm genuinely, I want to hear more music from Josh. Genuinely. I don't know when the last time he released was, but uh, maybe I'm out of touch. But I need to hear more shit. Like, ASAP. We then had another repeat from the first Dead Ego show in Brown Claire. <laughs> I will say this performance was way better than the one he delivered at the first Dead Ego show. I believe he said at, uh, at the first Dead Ego show he was either nervous or like disassociating or was like just having some sort of, you know, breakdown almost. So uh, it would make sense that this performance was better. But not only was this performance better, it was very good. Um, 
And if there was an award for best backup dancers, he'd definitely win it. Uh, his crew was uh, definitely, def they, they got, you know, they, I mean, to be fair, they were the only crew that was dancing necessarily to their, to their uh, boys' music. Uh, I will say the one kid looked like Griffin Johnson and Quentin Griggs had a love child. Uh, that's not a diss. Uh, and the amount of people that actually get that, shout out to you. But <laughs> you can't tell me I'm wrong, okay? You just can't, okay? The vibes for this performance were immaculate uh, and uh, just great all around. The crowd was definitely very receptive, too. Uh and it actually made me appreciate Brown Claire's music a lot more. Then it was time for the artist I was probably looking most, uh, I was probably most looking forward to that night, and that was Gunner. Hey, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. One, two, three, go. Seeing Gunner make an appearance at uh, First Class Fest last year, I believe. Uh, I think the holiday brought him out. Uh, and his song, Hold It Back, got me hooked. And since then, like, every release has been added to my playlist. Not only that, but, like, he's... Uh, I saw him on the Cuff Boys podcast, which is wild to me. Wild to me. Like, I'm not even going to go into how wild that is to, in my brain, because it's, it's just going to sound like some fanboy shit. His song, Oh My God, was on pace to be my top song this year by a mile until it was uh, 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 removed from Apple Music and Spotify for copyright reasons. Either way, though, this dude was fucking amazing live. Uh, easily my favorite performance of the night. We then had the surprise guest in Eli Juggs. <laughs> Honestly, since the first Dead Eagles show, I've really been starting to dig into the Eli Jugg's discography, and uh, especially now that he's managed by First Class and Devon, uh, his new project, Jug Pop, I haven't been able to give it a proper listen yet, but from what I've heard, this dude is talented. This dude can definitely go far. Uh, definitely one of the more exciting artists there is in the underground right now. Performance-wise, it was all right. 
Uh, I feel like this is the second time uh, Eli has performed and gone, I'm out of breath. It wasn't necessarily anything crazy. It was just nice to see him in Toronto again, you know? He's, he's an honorary Canadian at this point. Finally, we had Slump Success, uh, the headliner. Now I'm not the big slump, the biggest slump fan. I can name about three songs, and one of them is a remix of another. You could guess which one that is. But this def, this dude definitely gets the crowd hype. It's that rage sound that obviously is the party sound still uh, to the day to this day in the underground. Uh, it was definitely a sick atmosphere for his set. People actually got up and from the tables and you know did their thing and you know actually had a good time but i i will say i'm not i would never go out of my way to go pay and see slump success if it wasn't for like a show like this but that's my recap uh i genuinely think that the, the show was a success it was a good night uh, i got to see some people i got to see don valley was there and uh, just you know out outside supporting you know got to see the first class boys got to see everybody it was it was a good good event for if you wanted to network listen uh i'm going to end this 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 video with some advice to anybody if you're creating content if you're a, a musician you're an artist get outside it doesn't fucking matter where just show up i've built my career at this point because i i'm outside i live in fucking barry you have no excuse go to the show if you live like anywhere in the greater toronto area take a train do whatever you can get to these shows meet people interact with people like as much as i started making my connections online i furthered those connections because i'm outside that's the only reason i am where i am today and the reason that I, I feel like I'm growing still is because I'm outside at these shows. That's literally how 10K Moss and Wavy Jackson have been uh, building their careers. Like I've heard their story. They told me like they, they went outside. They just met people. They didn't even tell them they were musicians. Just act like a normal human being and you'll go places. Uh, I think there's this quote, I've heard it from Mike Malak, uh, who is uh, Logan Paul's friend, whatever, some would say binge boy. I wouldn't say that. Some would say that. Your hard work will get you into the right rooms with the right people. Your energy in those rooms will take you where you really need to be. And uh, that's what I truly believe. So just go outside. Get outside. And come support. This is a fucking community. Come support the fucking community. Okay? Anyways, that's it for today's video. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought of the night. And... If you enjoyed anything about that night, buy a fucking ticket to First Class Fest. They have one of the hardest, the hottest underground artists there is right now. And Dom Corleo headlining. It's going to be a massive party. Moss and Wavy are performing. Gunner's performing again. So take this video as a preview and buy a fucking ticket to First Class Fest. And I will see you guys in the next video.